Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, today we're going to talk about the backpack drive. It's called the backpack because it kind of hitches a ride on the back of your vintage computer. So without further ado, let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. They offer an excellent quick turn PCB prototyping service, which now has a free upgrade to the 150-160 temperature range. They also offer a wide range of services that allow you to go from idea to a finished product, including CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, PCB assembly. Go on over to pcbway.com OEM to find out more. As you might recall, a friend of mine designed the backpack and a couple years ago he sent me one and I thought it was so cool. I encouraged him to make some more and wound up helping him out. Now the original backpack, this guy here, has an AT Mega processor. And of course, during the great pandemic, uh, those become unobtainium. So he redesigned it to take a newly available AVR processor. And it has a few more features, but generally these guys work the same. This new one is dubbed the Backpack Drive Plus, and you can tell that it's different from the outside because we embossed a little extra text here on the front. We'll have a look at the inside and see how they differ. So here we have the original backpack and you notice it has a through hole crystal. It's got a little chip hanging out in this corner. And on the backpack plus it has a little surface mount crystal here and we don't see this other chip in this corner. Uh, other than that, they're pretty difficult to tell apart. Same basic layout, same basic board design, same battery holder, same switch, etc. And more importantly, uh, they function, you know, 99% identical and we'll cover the few differences uh, here in just a little bit. Now, when you get the backpack, it'll look like this. You take loose these two screws. You slide the cover off like so. And you pop the battery in. The battery polarity is embossed in the plastic here positive like this. I've got some tape around this battery because I use it for testing backpack drives. That way I can just pop it right back out. That's all there is to putting the battery in it. And then you slip the cover back on. The switch pokes through the little hole there. Like that. And put the screws back in there. Just use the same screws that came with it uh, because they are the correct length for this application. I'm going to be demonstrating use of the backpack today using this Tandy Model 102, uh, which has a DB25 connector on it, so the backpack will plug right in. Uh, other computers the backpack is compatible with might not have a DB25, so there are adapters available. There's an adapter that looks like this, uh, one that's for the Tandy WP2, which is a, a DB25 to DB9 adapter. Uh, there's one that looks exactly like this, which is for the Sinclair Z88, uh, except Sinclair used a non-standard wiring of the DB9, so it is a different adapter. There's also uh, an adapter like this, which is for the Epson PX8 and HX20. Uh, it takes too many DIN cables that go to the computer because it's special and has two serial ports and your backpack plugs into this and this switches between the two serial ports uh, you use the slow serial port for the cli terminal mode and the fast serial port for the backpack operation in another video i'll cover the use of the backpack on the epson there is an extensive user manual online for the original backpack and the backpack Pack Drive Plus. I've got the original backpack manual here because the commands are 99.9% .9 the same. And this is the one I have printed out. Uh, all of this is on GitHub. I'll put the links in the description below. I'm also adding all these links to my website, which I'll put below as well. Uh, a lot of information in here. There's a lot of stuff you can do with the backpack, a lot of functionality in the command line interface. 
So be sure to have a look at this manual and keep the PDF of it handy. So the backpack drive does take a micro SD card. There's an option of getting one that's pre-formatted when you check out, or you can supply your own. There are details in the manual. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy plugged into our 102, just like that. Get it here where we can see the screen again. There we go. I'm going to turn the backpack drive on. And we're going to go over to Telcom to look at one of the most common uh, issues newbies have with the Model T family is getting a, a file that's labeled as a basic file, but it's really a text file or a .do file. And that comes from the days when people wanted to share files on BBSs, which you couldn't use binary files there that needed to be text files and uh, or at least it was a lot easier sharing text files so they would uh, rename it to .ba indicating it was a basic file but it was really a text file so anyhow we're going to go into telecom and i've already got my connection string in here uh, to do that you type in stat 98n1dnacnn and the beep is it being cranky because I typed in too many characters here. Uh, this one connection string will work for any of the Model T family computers from the 100 up through the 200, which is why Radio Shack recommended it back in the day. And then I'll hit F4 to go into terminal mode, and I'll hit Enter four times to go into CLI mode. Uh, after 30 seconds or so, if you haven't done anything, this blinking cursor will go off and we'll get a T here saying that it timed out and it's now in sleep mode and you just hit enter four more times to go back into CLI mode. Just like that. Okay, and if I do an LS, we'll get a directory listing here and all the things with a slash after it are directories. And we saw some bin files here. These are different firmwares. Uh, we can see a readme.txt. So if I type in cat readme.txt and you can see it's scrolling that text file up the screen. Uh, control S will pause it. Control Q will start it again. The reason this was added to this directory as a text file so you can also view it on the computer itself. Okay. And I'll look at the directory again to remember what the name of the file is I'm interested in here. So we can see that if it's a text file, we can read it. I'm going to look at this hey ba file, uh, cat hey.ba. Now, if this is a text file, we'll be able to read it. If it's an actual tokenized basic file, we'll be able to read some of it, and a lot of it will be gibberish. And yeah, you can see here that we've got a lot of gibberish. So this is an actual tokenized basic file, so the BA extension is correct. Now, where is this going to make a difference? Let's change directory into user programs. These are programs that users have written that leverage the capabilities of the backpack. And you can see that these have a BA extension. The readme text file tells you what they are. Um, so if I do cat rtc.ba, ah, I can read that. That's actually a text file, which is an ASCII representation of the basic file. Now we can still load this on this computer, but we need to rename it first. So if I type in rn rtc.ba to rtc.do, now if we do this, see now it's showing up as a do file and we can load it onto the computer. If we try to use ts-dos to load a .do, which is masquerading as a .ba, uh, you'll either lock up at the computer or you'll get uh, gibberish loaded. Uh, most likely you'll lock up at the computer. 
the combination of TS DOS and it trying to tokenize the computer trying to tokenize things on the fly doesn't work well. There's a, a lot you can do in this uh, uh, CLI mode. Uh, for instance, there are uh, multiple computers that this standard firmware uh, can be set to work with. So if I do a uh, set, it'll tell me what all the current settings are, the time is in AM, PM, the format of the date, sleep timer setting. Mode MT is for the Model T computers, the so Model 100, 102, 200. Uh, you can do uh, set, set mode WP2. If you want to use it with the Tandy WP2, I'm not going to hit enter here because the WP2 runs at a different baud rate and I'll have to back out of the telecom uh, in order to talk to this again. Uh, there's also a GE in mode, which is generic. It's set up for the CPM 100 if you are using CPM on your Model 100. And for the Backpack Drive Plus, there is a Z88 mode, which adds some special stuff for use with the Sinclair Z88. Since I didn't hit enter after this, it didn't change our mode to WDP2. And we can confirm that was set again, and we're still in Model T mode. We can also do info, which will tell us the voltage of our battery, the voltage that it stepped up to, the date, this is in day, month, year format, the time, uh, the amount of time this unit has been powered up for, uh, build date, hardware version, things like that. Now, uh, if you get this and you want to use it on an Epson, you'll need to change it to the Epson firmware or when there is a firmware update, you'll want to update the firmware on the unit. That is a fairly easy process. You remember when we did the LS and we saw that there was a couple, oops, we're still in the uh, user program directory. So I need to go change directory dot dot to go back down one label or one level. There we go. Now we're at our root directory. And the Backpack Drive Plus 3000 is the firmware for this. And the EBPD 3000 is the Epson firmware. So if I want to upgrade the firmware, even though I have the latest on here, I'll take you through the process. We'll say boot, not boot, not buoy. Okay. Boot, there we go, boot u. We're telling it this is the upload file. And I forget the name of that file already. Okay. Try this again, ls, there we go. So it's backpack drive plus 3000 and I'm gonna do a boot u backpack drive plus 3000.bin enable update yes and now we see that for the update sector we're pointing to that file and now I type in reboot and we'll see normal update it's going to go through this thing this will take a few seconds and then what it's going to do when it's rebooted, it's going to see that it has an active terminal uh, connection. So it's going to dump the initial program loader. Don't worry about this. It's just printing it out to the screen. That's just a, an extra bonus sign that everything went okay. And now we're back into the CLI mode. Now we'll uh, go into uh, TS-DOS and see how we load that uh, file that we re renamed properly to a DO file. So to exit the terminal, I'm going to hit F8, disconnect, yes. F8 again, back to the main menu. I'll go to TS-DOS. And I'm going to look at the disk. 
I want to change to the user program directory. Just hitting enter there. And I am going to tell it to load f1 the rtc.do. Hit enter to load it as the same file name. Okay. Now I'm going to go up to the root directory. You notice here this tells us which directory we're in. Okay, now we're in root, so I'll hit F4 to go back to RAM. F8 to close out of TS-DOS. And then I'm going to go into basic and tell it to load rtc.do. Now you'll see this flashing on the screen when I do this. It's reading it in a line at a time and tokenizing it. It's telling us to wait. And then we can save it as rtc.ba. OK. And if we list it, now we do indeed have that program on the computer. And what this does is, oops, there is a syntax error in this program. Oh, it's missing the the remark statement there in line five. No worry, we go to edit five. And let's go over, over, remark. And then F8. Run. Syntax error in 60, oh no. What it did is it pulled the time and date off of the backpack and put it on the computer, but there were some syntax errors in this program. So, what is in 60? I don't know why it's complaining about a syntax error there. Oh, it's not, it's not expecting this date format, I think. Okay. Anyhow, uh, the point is we successfully took a mislabeled uh, text file, basic program, renamed it, loaded it onto the computer, and got it to tokenize. Now, if we exit out of basic by pressing F8, we can see that we do indeed have rtc.ba on the computer. I mentioned to start with, there are a few differences between the Backpack Drive Plus and the original Backpack. Uh, I guess the two most notable things are that the Backpack Drive Plus does support an X modem mode. Uh, so with computers that have a serial port and some type of uh, terminal program, you can transfer files with X modem. Uh, there was a bit more RAM on the new processor, which allowed that to happen. Uh, couldn't squeeze that into the original backpack. Uh, the Backpack Drive Plus also has that Z88 mode I mentioned. And for machines that don't have the DB25 port, remember there are adapters available. You will need the mini DIN cables. Uh, for this guy to plug into the machine. Uh, there are links in the manual and on the product page, and I'll put all that stuff down below as well for you. The special Epson firmware for the Backpack Drive Plus allows it to emulate the Epson TF10 and PF20 drives. Uh, so there isn't any special software that you need on your Epson because it's emulating the drives it knows how to talk to already. Uh, the reason for the switch is, like I said, is to switch to the, the slow serial for the terminal mode and the fast serial for the disk drive emulation. For uh, the Sinclair Z88, the, there are uh, a couple of programs available to talk to TS-DOS. Uh, people were hooking the original Tandy portable disk drives to those back in the day. Uh, you can use those same programs with the Backpack Drive and the Backpack Drive Plus. For the Model T range computers, you can bootstrap TS-DOS off of the backpack itself. That'll take up five to six K of RAM. You can also run it from ROM. Um, if you have a Rex original ROM with the TS-DOS in it or something like the dial ROM, that'll work too. Now, in another video, we'll look into some of the more advanced features of the backpack, and then we'll get into later on uh, how it works on the Epson. If you have any questions or comments, well, please let me know in that comment section down there below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, bye.